Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18's Mumbai Newsroom. I'm Sonal Bhutra and you're watching MF Corner. Today we are going to touch upon on the fixed income funds, this category as a whole, what makes it interesting and what are the important things that an investor should consider if they invest in this category. Are these funds any better than the regular sought after fixed deposits? If no, why? This and more we'll discuss with our guest today. Rahul Jain, President and Head at Novama Wealth is joining us now. Rahul, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, while we usually speak about the equity oriented funds and focus a lot more on that as well fixed income category a lot of segments there as well so it's important to understand uh, in detail what an investor should keep in mind as well so that's the first question what are some of the important things to focus on when it comes to investing in fixed income funds if a retail shareholder is looking at it especially so Sunil, i think one of the uh, most important things uh, from fixed income or debt mutual funds uh, if you want to invest from retail shareholder point of view is first to have a clarity on your time horizon because uh, there are different categories in the debt mutual fund on the basis of time horizon you can invest for a single day three months nine months 12 months up to six seven eight years and obviously you get a higher yield on uh, on a longer tenure because lower tenure always attract lower yields so you are you should have an understanding of uh the time horizon you want to invest upon uh second is uh what is the return expected because whenever you're investing on something you have, you have a return in your mind at what do you expect and obviously as as an individual how much risk you're willing to take uh to just give you one example in a long-term debt mutual fund categories there is a guild fund as an option which is fairly low risk because all money goes into uh government securities it's a longer tenure one. Uh, it might have a risk, uh, interest risk, uh, because of the movement of interest. Uh, but if you hold to maturity, there is no risk. And then there are credit risk funds. So both of the funds gives you very different returns, but have different risk categories also. So understanding about your time horizon, uh, what is the return expectation from an individual client, and then what type of risk the individual can take. I think if you look at these three parameters, I think. Uh, you will be able to decide uh, which uh, funds you should look after and, and what fund you should select upon on the basis of your suitability for sure. Okay, that's very helpful. So that takes me to the next question, Rahul, because uh, it is very simple, but still not so simple because we want to understand how are interest rates and yields connected in this asset class basis the rate cycle that we are in? So uh, interest rate and yields, uh, both are directly correlated. Uh, if the interest goes up, the yields will go up. Uh, but the bond prices or the debt mutual fund NAVs are inversely proportional to interest rate. Uh, I'll try explaining this uh, with an example as well uh, for our uh, viewers. Suppose uh, you, have, you have invested in a bond of rupees 100 and uh, that bond is giving you interest or yield at 9%. So in a year's time, you'll be able to make up a 9 rupees out of that. Now suppose interest rate goes up uh, to 10%. So effectively to make those 9 rupees, you have the bond which you need to invest is 90. So effectively the bond price from 100 will go to 90 because your interest rates have gone up. So generally that is what happens whenever interest rate goes up the bond prices go down and they, they adjust accordingly. So that is how the whole correlation between uh, between the bond price and interest rate is there. But for interest rate and yield, I think they're directly correlated. If the interest rate goes up, the yields will go up. The interest rate goes down, the yield will go down. That is how it uh, works. Okay, that's a very helpful example as well uh, with the numbers. In that case, Rahul, once someone understands the basics, how can one take exposure to fixed income instruments when it comes to mutual funds? You spoke about uh, some of the examples, what would the different categories be in this space. Also, is it a good time to look at this asset class or any time is good to look at this asset class? So, uh, uh, to invest in these categories, I think there are multiple categories available in the whole debt mutual fund basket on the basis of time horizon, the risk category, as I explained effectively where you can invest for a day in overnight fund, you can invest in a liquid fund up to three months. Then there are money market funds, which are for 12 months in guilds, you can do long-term with it, very low risk. In credit risk fund, you can invest in uh, a little higher risk 
fund, but a long term term duration. So there are a lot of categories, but it depends that what type of horizon you have for your investment. I have seen a lot of time people get confused that they have short term money, but they uh, park in long term. And that is where the complexity comes into play. Uh, and uh, obviously, your return expectation and how much risk you can take will always be important while thinking of investing in debt mutual funds as your fixed income investment. Uh, your second part of the question, whether it's a good time to invest in this ask class, I, as, as, you all, as you already said that, I think every time is a good time to ask, uh, invest in a fixed income asset class if your asset allocation allows. And if that is there, then obviously uh, you should invest in fixed income, whether interest rate cycle right now, later when it's going down, because in asset allocation, Fixed income is a very, very important constituent. And, and, and in Indian markets, a lot of investors are anyways investing in a lot of fixed income. So obviously, you should invest. Um, and, and also, if someone wants to play on the interest rate cycle effectively, where they're expecting the money to go, uh, the interest to go down. And as you look in the market from right now point of view, I think, yes, interest rates are peaking out. And at least in medium term, uh, we have a view that interest rates might cool down. So it's a good time uh, effectively to invest from that perspective as well. If you okay. look at both the perspectives, it, it seems to be a good time right now. Okay, you have mentioned a lot of things as to why fixed income funds should be a part of your category. But are there any other reasons why one should invest in fixed income funds uh, apart from the diversification opportunity that comes about uh, with this category? So I would say there are three primary reasons. One is that it provides as an alternative to traditional fixed deposit uh, in terms of investment uh, from fixed income point of view, because generally people go after fixed deposits where they get a fixed return on their money deployed on annual basis. And a lot of people use for retirement, et cetera. Every, there are a lot of people who want fixed earning over and over their salaries, et cetera. So they invest in fixed and uh, uh, so one is the alternate to fixed uh, deposits or the traditional. Second is that if you want to play in the interest rate cycle, suppose I have a view that right now interest rates are very high and next two, three years it will go down. Then through debt mutual funds, you can play them out. But if you invest in fixed deposits, it might not be very, very possible. So that is the second one. And third is, uh, I would say the liquidity part in this is, is better because uh, you can do you can do partial uh, withdrawal. Uh, you can exit any point of time, and there is no exit load except there's very minimal exit load that too after two three months on most of the funds are largely anything. There is no exit load mostly. So in that sense, if you see these other three large units, it's a good alternative. Uh, it helps you to play into the interest rate cycle if you are keen on doing that, and it provides you a lot of liquidity. So these are, I would say, the, the large reasons why people are looking at fixed income funds right now. Okay, all right. So um, in terms of returns and in terms of diversification, it makes sense. What about taxation? Which is more efficient? Is it the equity funds or fixed income funds? So uh, from efficiency point of view, obviously, equity funds are more efficient because an equity in short term, uh, you get uh, charged at 15% and in long term, you get charged at 10%. But on the fixed income funds or debt mutual funds, you are largely charged on MMR, which is maximum marginal rate of your, in, of your income tax. And effectively, in that sense, uh, it is, uh, I would say, uh, equity will be more efficient. But I would say that someone cannot uh, look at investing in uh, fixed income on equity on the basis of taxation. I think the core philosophy has to be asset allocation and uh, taxation or or uh, would always be a second or third derivative in terms of finally deciding what to invest upon. But core has to be asset allocation. If you have uh, asset allocation which allows you on the basis of your profile uh, equity investment, then do it. And if it requires to be doing debt, you have to do in debt irrespective that debt is more uh, in terms of inefficient in terms of tax. Mm, okay, take that point. You briefly mentioned that and you said how tenure is also very important uh, when you come to investing in fixed income funds. So how does one select debt funds based on the investment tenure? What is apt for a particular tenure that an investor is looking at? 
So I would say that all uh, debt funds are largely into three categories. One is the short term category, which allows you to invest from uh, one day to 12 months. Then there is a medium term categories, which is mostly about one to five years, one to four years, and then long term categories, which can be more than five to six years. Uh, if you look at a lot of corporate strategies, etc., invest in the short term funds, and a lot of people, individuals also invest in short term funds because the idle money lying in saving bank current account uh, does not yield much, but this can give you better returns. So, for example. A liquid fund right now gives you around 6.7 to 7 percent effectively. Uh, and if you have any investment which you want to just invest because people have idle cash, so if they want to park it for short term, then the liquid fund, ultra short term funds or money market, which is up to 12 months, makes a lot of sense. Uh, on long term basis, there are very there, there are a good number of categories like there is a PSU bond fund which is. 80% investment go to PSU banks, then there is a guilt fund, mostly in the GSEC. Then there is a corporate bond fund and credit risk funds where it allows uh, the fund managers to invest in uh, corporate bonds, etc., which are up to AA plus category or below AA plus category as well. So uh, yeah, again, I think the core comes back that uh, duration is on the basis of what you, uh, you have the money available for. Then you decide on what categories if you have long term money available, then you can pick more categories. Uh, mostly in short term, I think uh, people generally go after liquid and ultra short term up to three to six months. That is how uh, people invest uh, uh, in, in this fixed income debt fund category. Okay, all right. Take your point. It's a very interesting explainer on the entire category, Rahul, but we'll have to slip into a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this chat with you. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Mutual Fund Corner. We still have with us Rahul Jain and from Novama Wealth and we are speaking and understanding everything about fixed income funds and this category as well. You know, Rahul, you mentioned GILs, how um, <clears throat> they are a part of the fixed income fund list as well. But is this a good alternative generally from the other types that we have? Uh, what do they exactly mean and um, uh, how do you rate it versus the other categories? So, uh... I would say that if someone wants to invest uh, long term and uh, want mostly risk free in terms of credit <clears throat> risk, I think GILT is, is one of the best options because end of the day, most of the GILT money goes into government GSEC and uh, it is fairly risk free. The large part of the risk which uh, GILT uh, uh, might have is the interest rate risk. As I explained earlier also, <clears throat> that uh, the bond prices might go up and down on the basis of interest rate volatility. If your interest rates are going up, the bond prices might go down and the interest rate is going down, the bond price will go up. So you might have interest rate volatility, otherwise guilt is the best alternative from fixed income investment through debt mutual fund. And, and it is, is largely risk-free, there is no risk because the most of the money goes into government securities. Uh, and, and if someone wants to play on the interest rate cycle from long term point of view, because there are a lot of people who have a view that in long term, the rates what India has right now might not be there, it will be far lower. Then uh, guilt uh, fund becomes a good alternative to playing that, uh, uh, that whole hypothesis also out. So if you want to invest in long term and mostly risk free, I think guilt is a very, very good alternative. Okay, take that point. But you know, when we are talking about how fixed income should be an important part of your um, uh, portfolio, corporates and institutions are still a big part of the holdings in fixed income funds. What's the reason for less interest by uh, retail shareholders, according to you? So uh, I think uh, corporate and treasuries uh, largely use the short term bond, so short term funds uh, to use it to park their money in their treasury because money lying in the current account does not yield any interest. And that's why there's a lot of money from corporate and treasuries goes into these short term funds effectively. Uh, on the other hand, your question that why retail participation is still not very high. I, I would say that uh, investing in uh, debt mutual funds 
is still uh, nuanced because uh, like i was explaining that uh, the bonds prices go up and down on the interest rate volatility uh, and uh, interest rate interest rates are volatile correct uh, there is something other happening globally and which impacts the interest rates so there is a lot of uh, volatility in any you find and and as a retail investor uh, they mostly want to invest in products or or options where if i have invested x amount and i will get a y then it should be certainty there should not be volatility so 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 this green gets some volatility and and uh, some understanding challenges which makes it uh, less favorable but there have been categories like target maturity mutual funds etc which were very clear that if you invest x and by this point you by this time horizon you get a this much return i think those have been very very uh, i would say sought after in the retail community as well from uh, debt mutual funds okay so in that case uh, it's a tricky question but i have to ask you what would the ideal split be into equity and fixed income when it comes to high medium and low risk takers so uh, uh, for uh, uh, finding an allocation on fixed income and equity i think uh, the core hypothesis or the way of looking at is the asset allocation uh, asset allocation is a combination of your allocation towards equity fixed income and gold uh we generally use a, a very easy formula to ascertain an asset allocation of individual so for example if someone is at 40 so 100 minus 40 should be his equity allocation 35 will be fixed income allocation 5 to 10% the gold allocation depending on the market scenario globally now if you are if you are a very high risk taker uh, instead of Uh, doing a 60 alloc percent allocation into equity 35 into fixed income you might want to do a 25% uh, fixed income allocation but if you are low risk taker you very conservative you think that uh, markets might not do well or i don't have a risk appetite of uh, taking high risk then your uh, fixed income allocation from 35 to easily can go to 50% so that is how the asset allocation movement generally happens with the category of risk Uh, which you think about yourself and then uh, i think it's a fairly easy way uh, to actually find your ideal allocation uh, on the basis of your age and your risk profile to each their own right so it has to be based on a lot of things as you mentioned uh, different risk categories tenure and a lot more rahul it has been a very helpful chat thank you so much for joining us and throwing light on the fixed income fund category difficult to understand so we need experts opinion here as well all right uh, uh, with that we'll take your leave on this edition of mf corner but you do stay tuned for closing bell to take you through the last hour of trade <laughs>